even the cold water comes in hot, okay? So basically what I'll do during that time is I'll turn nothing but cold water on to throw hot water completely off. So, um, but nonetheless, we just gotta keep it around 77 degrees. They check that right there. Okay, okay, on 79, right? Yeah, well, it's not even running right now. So okay. You, when it's uh, actually pushing through with the ROs on, they try to keep it around so like 77. So they can give or take a little bit, just we don't want it like up to 100 degrees or down to like 60 degrees or nothing like that. All right. Now, it comes in here, this is your city booster pump. This booster pump takes the water and just pushes it to the rest of our system toward the RO, okay? Um, this uh, goes up through here. Uh, this shows what gallon per minute was pushing. Um, you'll see that jump up when you uh, turn the RO on. Goes through here, it goes through your first sediment filter. This sediment filter is just one of the filters that gets some of the uh, hard, uh, not hard, uh, any kind of particles in the water so has to get it out of the water. This is the dirtiest uh, filter we'll have because okay. it's the first one coming from the city. The city. Okay, yeah. okay. And all these filters, I change all these filters out once a month. But like I said, that one, because it's the first one, it's the only one that really turns dark. The other one's probably still white by the end okay. of But just so you know. And which they should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they should be. Not that it goes all this stuff, yeah, they should be fine. But yeah, this will be pretty like brown or whatnot. But goes through this sediment filter, uh, then goes to your first carbon tank, which is a worker carbon tank. Um, they've probably gone over this with you already, but uh, the carbon tank will just take out the chlorine and chloramines out of the water. Mm -hmm. um, the worker tank, pretty much will get all of it out of there. The point of the second uh, tank is if you do have breakthrough, for some reason this thing got too much chlorine chloramines, they can't take it out of the water anymore, uh, this one will catch whatever's left over. Now, if y'all do have get to the point where y'all check the water on this tank and it's too much uh, chlorine, the chlorine and chlorine are too high in there, that's considered a breakthrough. At that point, instead of checking these tanks every four hours, you'll start checking this one every two hours, Okay. all right? Y'all let me know about it, and then I'll come in here, we'll do what we gotta do to get this thing where we need to be, mm -hmm. where it's taking out the corner corners. All right, so they go through these two uh, tanks, they come to your softener tank. Uh -huh. The water softener takes out all the hardness out of the water. Um, it's comboed with this brine tank, which has salt, and we fill the, uh, that brine tank with those salt pellets uh, as needed. Um, and pretty much what that does overnight, it regenerates the water in there so we can uh, you know, take out more of the hardness the next day. Okay? okay, so why do you not need to see any water in the brine tank? It's not that you don't need to see it, it's just it's enough water if it's right or below. You don't need to like have it overfill. Okay. So as long as you've got more like, more salt in there and you do water, then you know you've got enough in there. You don't want it, you don't want it to dissolve all the salt and you got nothing but water. Okay. And then you're not regenerating your software. Okay. Alright, so uh, these things do regenerate every night. Uh, these uh, they go do a um uh the worst backwash, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. They go these go through backwash every night. They have the, you can see the times on the inside if I open this up. But nonetheless each one of them goes not every night, every other night. Um, I think we have a schedule of Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, these things go through backwash. When they do that, your RO is not functional. You cannot get no water at that point. Okay. All right. This red light will come on when that happens. Um, but usually you're not, we're not functioning in the middle of the night, not through the water system. Y'all use the portable RO. System. Okay. Okay. But nonetheless, that's just what they do uh, every other night. Going through these tanks, and then you've got a multi cartridge tank down here. That's a, just another set of filter, just like that one. Any more dirt or anything, uh, uh, high, uh, particles in the water, it'll grab that out of there as well. Okay. Then you've got a UV lamp. Does, uh, it's like a purification for the water. It's in the house what UVs does. So go through there. Then comes to uh, a pre sediment filter. Again, just like that one over there. Okay. Um, whatever else is the last grab, the grab it for it gets into the RO membrane. Uh -huh. So it goes through there into the RO. The RO does, which you've probably seen in the modules, just the whole reverse osmosis process. Uh, it goes through the membranes, purifies the water. Um, that's just a simple way to put it. Then it comes up through this uh, another filter. This one, again, grabs whatever particles it can if there's anything left over. By that point, you pretty much got pure water. There's nothing in it. Mm -hmm. It goes from there into your storage or holding tank. Either word is fine. 
all right? Now there's two different types of uh, water systems. You might see one in another clinic, something like that. They have in direct feed and indirect feed. This is an uh, indirect feed, which means the water goes to the floor for the patients, loops around, and comes right back to the tank, all right? So if nobody's using water, it just keeps circulating the same water. And you said this is called direct feed? This is indirect. Indirect feed. feed. Uh, now direct feed, it goes, water will go from the RO straight to the patients. And it doesn't get it doesn't get used there, it comes back and goes back to the RO. Okay. Okay. This one you have direct feed. So the RO isn't running right now because it hasn't reached the level to where it needs to refill the tank. Got it. Now this is labeled, you'll see right here where it says RO start. When the water when the water level gets down to there, the RO will automatically kick on. Okay. And it'll start uh purifying water and sending it to the tank. Okay. okay. When it reaches uh, a certain TCD. So uh, it'll fill up and come all the way up in here. When it reaches the RO off, the RO will cut itself off, okay? Um, just as a side note, when they do the water check and turn the RO on, there is a 30 minute override. So you can press that button, the RO will cut on and it'll run 30 minutes straight for the dog. And it'll keep filling this tank up. There's an overflow in the back, so it'll go straight to drain, there's too much in there. So you don't have to worry about it, you know, busting the cap over. Okay. okay? So pretty much this water, as long as this thing running, this same water is looping throughout the whole system. We'll go over what the pattern of the loop is in. So from here, it goes from the holding tank to your distribution cart. The distribution cart has two uh, repressurization uh, pumps. They alternate, one, only one running at a time. Uh, and they do that so it doesn't, one doesn't burn out too much. So after about an hour or two, I think, um, one cuts off, the other one cut on, and it will continue pushing the water to the floor. So it goes through those pumps, up through to this uh, UV lamp here. This UV lamp, again, does the same thing that lamp does, just UV rays to try to purify that water even more. Goes through here to an ultra filter, again, taking out anything that might be still in that water. And they get lower micron, so the smaller the micron, the smaller the particles it's able to catch before it goes through. Goes through there, and then gets sick to the floor, all right? Now, this is the uh, part that goes to the floor. Um, yeah. And pretty much, uh, the water will go all the way to, straight to where the window's at over there, just there, station one, then over to where the isolation room is at, down that side and to this, uh, through this wall, uh, close to the door, then back into this room. It comes to this room, down here, down there, we got like a little extra sample water uh, thing over here. So if we need RO water, we can get it out of there, kind of like a sink. Um, then we have two ports over here for uh, running machines, flushing them and all that stuff in the morning when they open. Goes back into the ceiling and then back down over here. Now this is the SDS. Uh, we used to have a bicarb mixer over here, and that's what that water will come over here for. Okay. They use that water to mix bicarb. Right. Water. We don't do that anymore, so the water still goes through that loop, but it's not its not connected to the SDS. Mm -hmm. We only use the SDS for the acid, which goes to the head tanks up there, which I use on the floor. So it goes back up, it goes back comes up. back down to the where the city water is coming in? Uh -uh. Okay. It's going to go back up there and it's going to come over here. Do this to here. You come back down here, loops through here and then back into your tank. Got so it. That's, that's what they call it, the loop. It's an indirect feed. It's constantly looping around and back into the tank. Okay. Um, like I said, as the water gets used, the RO will kick in and fill that up again. Um, and that's pretty much the gist of all that. Um, any questions or anything as far as that goes? Oh. What yeah. are these pipes for? Why Why can you see through here? What are they? So these are your head tanks for the acid and bicarb. Uh, again, like I said, the bicarb, when we had the bicarb mixture here, the SDS would send the bicarb into that tank on the right. Um, see here. It would send it to that tank on the right. And then that tank would fill up, and the ho this blue hose at the bottom of it, it would go to the floor. Okay. That would hook up to the wall boxes out there. Now, again, we don't use that anymore. The tank, the bicarb tank is gone. The acid one is still here. So it goes, the SDS will pull out of that drum, fill up this tank here. 
then that red line at the bottom goes out into our wall boxes on the floor. Okay. So that's why. So if we got if these are clear because if we need to go up there, change anything, fix anything like that, we can get to it pretty easy. We can see what's going on up there. So this is down. where our 2.5 bath is exactly. located. Okay. Exactly. Two, exactly. 2.5. 2.5, yep. So it's coming out of that acid drum into that tank there. It's okay. that head tank there. Out of the acid drum into the head tank. And then from that head tank, of course, flowing down to y'all, all those wall boxes. Okay, well, thank you so very much. You've explained it very well.